creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. The segmented antennae move with apprehension, searching for something that's not there. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. It is. You glance over your shoulder. The lieutenant holds a piece of milled aluminium. He begins to pull it open extremely carefully. Looks like a camera. Yes. We need a photo. No one will believe us. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. He's letting his pride get in the way. You see the phasmid turn to him. Its mandible antennae reaching out. Its motions are quick, sudden. Shh, okay. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you. Its antennae taking their measure of the air, slowly. Nothing changes in the cyclical brain motion of the creature's limbs. They are porcelain white on the inside and reed colored on the out. Beige, light brown and striped. You are unsure if it is scared or not. Its insect mind is impenetrable to your reasoning. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds, and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Maybe it is real, the pheromone. About now, he is ready to believe in anything. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes lit motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. As you do, the invertebrate comes to life, its limbs moving independent of each other, as if each has a mind of its own. They are white, like stalks of porcelain, knitting above you. Praying to you. Unwittingly, the insect continues its stridulations, as it moves, tuft-like structures still pretending to be plants rustle along on its joints. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. The faintest smell, like you've never felt before. Like burnt roses. Careful, it may be poisonous. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. 
the little bubbles begin to burst, one by one, letting out that same smell like summer burning. Apricot blossoms, white blossoms erupting, a sensation like cold hands on your face. Okay. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. The shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant, hypnotized by the flash. It stands frozen before you. I got it. For all time. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral, like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. The sensation is electrifying, resounding through your body. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. It tastes like sugar, very faint. The anthropod towers above you, tufts of reeds pointed from limb and head alike. Odorless, mostly comprised of water. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. It's hollow exoskeleton collapsing. A small shudder passes the creature's arm. High above you, its black pearl eyes still glisten, mesmerized by the light passing its nervous system. There is some kind of countdown happening as its signal. The invertebrate is regaining control. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off, in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. I hate it. Tell me what it's like for you. Yes, holy is the Lord of hosts, and all the earth is filled with his glory. Now, I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images, a kind of darkness being intruded upon, transient. Deep, moist, shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms, all speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an era funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. Are you sure? Sometimes, when molting, I will grow a lost limb. One time something went wrong, and a small leg replaced a missing antenna. Yes, the leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. Yes, thankfully someone ate it. The next time I molded, I grew an antenna again. So am I. 
I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Yes. No one detected me for such a long, long time. For thousands of years. I did it. Out of sight. Trapped myself in greenery. No one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand years. No. You are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. I think we should eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insulindia Isuma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight. Masquerading as the reeds, molding, calming myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. No, no one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective, dripping off blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea, the first in a thousand years. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Revolshaw, district of Martinez, March 51. No, you are. The moral of our encounter is, I am a relatively medium life form, while it is you who are a total extreme madness. A volatile senior nerve system ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. You are a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if he misplays us all one day? Or just forget. So, it is already happening. One day, one of you will close your eyes and sign, and open them to see that none of this ever existed. No, the pale too. It is an. You're a vile. We suspect it was. Instead of air, you. Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the Simeon Butcher. Soon, one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. It doesn't look like that, no. You're just staring at it. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? I think you should back away from the unstudied species now. No, there 
There is one more. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you before you go. That woman. Turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. For freedom. She was hell on earth. It doesn't take a three meters stick insect to tell you that. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Just like that, it's gone, skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. And something under it, in the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds, a collection of items. It's gone. Apparently, yes, like a water strider. Only, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What now? In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. We need to check on him. This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Orania, is issued to a black-haired woman called Katarzyna Alazie. Classius hidden documents from the MT boy. It's Klasia, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. Maybe our man, Mr. Dross, took it from Klasius, or whatever her name was, hiding place, or... Like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would be highly unusual. By now, the lieutenant has accepted your unusual methods. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island, and the scope. Maybe Mr. Dross lost it, but to seek this out would be very unusual behavior for an arthropod. She said it would be for Anouk Meyer Smith. Anouk Meyer Smith. Katarzyna Alazia was supposed to be her real name. Where Klazia comes from, remember? God damn it. No, she lied to us. Her so-called real name was not her real name. Somehow she's managed to lie to us about that too. I don't know, but it's not Katarzyna Alazia or Klazia. Or Anouk Meyer Smith. We didn't even scratch the surface with her, detective. Perhaps it's better that we didn't arrest her. Who knows what hell she'd be raising in my district by now. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. See? 
Mr. Dras? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets, his gap-toothed mouth shaking. Like an addict of some terrible substance. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling and he breathes slowly. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dras? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. Old age and shock. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. That could be part of the shock. But you're right, something is off here. Mr. Dras. No response. Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief, and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it... Mm -hmm. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The, the, the. the doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is a little advance for a nurse. He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him, like he didn't want to leave this place, and the insect maybe. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. No one would believe you without it. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left, wherever he is. No reaction. His breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. This is an old man, at last. No longer a tin soldier but the broken down remains of a man. Did you take this passport and other papers from a boy on the coast? The spirit. He hears us. The spirit? No reply. He's gone again. Try something else? We got him back for a moment. I... I lost. He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid. This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. We should think about getting back to the mainland. To get help. He'll be safe here. If we don't take too long. <laughs>